So, so now let's go ahead and talk about the test statistic for testing a hypothesis claim about a population, two population means that are independent. So when you look at the formula in this box, it probably looks a little scary or intimidating. So let's go back to the formula you used for one population hypothesis tests of a mean. Z equals X bar minus mu divided by sigma, who itself is divided by the square root of n, the sample size. So the concept for that formula is basically your test value is your observed minus your expected over your error. So X bar was our observed. Our sample average is what we saw. And so X1, X bar 1, and X bar 2 are what we're going to see from two samples. Now notice we're subtracting them because we're comparing the two samples. And so to compare them is to subtract them. Next, we subtracted the population value, which was the expected value, what has already been established as a fact. So for us, it's mu1 minus mu2. If we're subtracting the sample data, then we would be subtracting the population data. Now the bottom part probably doesn't quite look right. We were dividing by what is called the error, but we saw it as just sigma divided by the square root of n. Well, we have two populations, and so the best way to compare them is to pull them together to add them. And if we're going to add, because of the way we need to add fractions, and they're going to be different with square roots, it's easier algebraically to have one giant square root. But since sigma was not originally under a square root, if we square it, see that little 2 up there, then the square root of a squared item is just the original item. So to go inside of a square root, sigma needed to be squared. Don't sweat the algebra. You can kind of just copy the formula. Another piece to discuss, point 5, says we can go ahead and use S1 and S2, the sample standard deviations from both populations, if we do not have the population's standard deviations available. And one super important thing to mention is when it comes to mu1 and mu2, if you remember the way we just wrote the hypothesis of H0 and H1, we never had numbers listed over there. So what we need to focus on is that the subtraction of population 1 and population 2 will always equal 0. Always equal 0. That's why it's in caps. So even though somebody's proposing probably that they're different or one is greater or less than another, remember we're comparing their differences. And in the event that they were equal, then the subtraction of two equal numbers would be 0. And so just to help understand that concept, um, basically we kind of take that H0 and H1 that we had before and we would be subtracting mu2 over, so this is how it would look. I've got H0, we'll just focus on that one, is mu1 equals mu2. So if we subtract mu2 to both sides, then the result would be mu1 minus mu2, but it would be equal to zero. It's equal to zero because a number minus itself is always going to be zero. Five minus five is zero. Nineteen minus nineteen is zero. Negative three minus negative three is zero. But what we need to know is that means we will always use zero for mu1 minus mu2 in the test statistic. So in the formula that we have up here, mu1 minus mu2 will always be zero.